Yo, welcome to another installment of Entrepreneur TV. I'm your boy Chuck. I'm here with my man Idris Bashir. We're about to talk some goddamn entrepreneurship, man. Let me let him introduce himself and all he does and doesn't do. What's going on, good people? Well, first of all, I, I appreciate the yes, invite sir. to the show. Been humble, been watching y'all uh, for a minute, man. Proud of y'all grind, proud of y'all movement. You know, definitely. Got the power couple swag, so I appreciate right, y'all. Uh, you know, inviting me out here yeah. to talk a little bit. What's going on, good people? My name is Idris Bashir, hometown uh, Atlanta, born and bred, but been all over, man. I uh, played seven years in the NFL for the Coast Lion Panthers. Uh, was a second round draft pick. After that, you know, got into the real world. Got a couple jobs. Got fired from all of them. And then I figured <laughs> out. I said, you know what? <laughs> I said, I might need to go to the entrepreneurship route, you know, and so, uh, you know, done a number of different things, you know, been in logistics, transportation for a number of different years, uh, tried my hand at some concerts in my early 20s, um, been uh, in real estate for 15 plus years now, you know, and, and deep into crypto now, you know. So just just looking to keep learning, keep growing as an individual, as an entrepreneur and looking to share anything I know for those willing to listen. He is deep in the crypto. I mean, I'm glad we doing this or he would be on his phone looking at goddamn crypto. But, so you, you did, you played ball in college, you went to Memphis University, man. Shout out to Memphis, shout out to Young Dolph. Shout out to him, Tyler. RP Young Dolph. RP Young Dolph. That's, that's a sad situation. Going to school there, how do you feel about that? Was it was he big when you were in school there or was he, was he known? Man, look, don't, uh, I know I got gray hairs on him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, I had you know, an you know, <laughs> Now, been banging for a while. Man. Yeah. You know, that whole Memphis music scene been, yeah. been a, uh, on for a minute. But, yeah. uh, I mean, Dolph been putting out bangers for a while, man. And, you know, it was, he was one of those guys in the city, man, that, that people really looked up to just yeah. for his movement, man, the way he touched the, the community, the way people, he related to people, and just his overall mission, man, which was, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what was it, the PRE, paper writing entertainment. Yeah. So, you know, that's what it was about, man. Just, you know, bettering himself and those around him, man. So it's sad to see somebody that was, you know, had a lot of purpose in, the, in, in their mission and in, the, in their path, you know, leave so early. Yeah, he was a big entrepreneur, too. Yeah, I'm he owned over 100 properties, so that's major. <laughs> oh, that's major. That's major. That's major. That's major. All right. So, so a young kid, man, um, you, did, you did four years in Memphis, or? Oh, uh, yeah, actually, um... Three years now. That was my junior year. Okay. Yeah, so I came in '97, and I was in the 2000. Look, after the 2000 football season. Okay. And the 2001 draft. Okay. As a junior. So how did that come about? Like, yo, you had an agent, and he was like, "Yo, it's time." Or, or man, what made you do that? Man, I ain't look. I wasn't thinking about it. trying to go to the league. None of that type of stuff. I was, yeah. you know, dead set on just coming back for my senior year. And, get my degree because I always made a promise to my mom, yeah. you know, that I was going to get my degree. Yeah. <laughs> you know, fast forward, I still don't have it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, at the time, man, that was my commitment. Yeah. I was really wanting to go to school and just make sure I just stuck that right out because, right, right. you know, it was always hammered into us, you know, go to school, get a job, you know, retire, you know, yeah. have, have their route. So I was trying to run the route, run, try, trying to run, run the play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Run play yeah, that's you know? what's up. And so in doing that, you know, um, it was crazy. I was sitting in the dorm room, me and my pop we was playing man, you know, sitting over there chilling. Had some homework, you know, Doing with students, <laughs> home, you know, and the phone rings. So I picked the phone up. It's uh, a running back coach, Charlie, mm -hmm. uh, Coach Cole, Charlie Cole, shout out Coach Cole. He called me and was like, man, come to the office over there. So yeah. I, the uh, coach's office was right across the street from our dorm, football dorm. So mm -hmm. I walked across the street and met with Coach Cole, and he was like, uh, you know, what you think about the league? And I'm like, you know, I think it's I cool. Think about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, just great. I ain't, even, yeah. ain't even thinking myself even playing it. So he was like, uh, "Man, you had a good season, man. You should put your name in the draft and just see, you know, see, see what that. they say." Damn. So I was like, "All right, that's cool." So you know, I sent off on my draft status, and mm -hmm. then it came back. You know, I wasn't thinking anything. I just sent off for it. It came back, and it was like, you know, based on our evaluation, we feel like you will go third round or better. And so I was like, that was a pause moment. Mm. I was like, okay, pause. That's third round. Yeah, like, yeah. That's like some paper. Paper. free agents. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. third round. That's first day. Because yeah, how many rounds is right, it? Right, right. Well, at the time, I think it was, what, seven rounds? Yeah. Or something six like or that. seven. Yeah, six, seven rounds. Yeah, so you three or better. That's... Yeah, so I called my mom and, you know, gave her the news. And 
we had a little quick powwow, and I was like, well, I'm out. You know, uh, I'm done. So, you know, that's kind of how it came about, you know, just as far as, you know, trying to even think about going to the league, you know. So the draft comes. Where were you at when you got drafted? Because you had to be watching the draft. You're going third round better. You you you, you yeah, told me that. So, you know, I was um uh man, I at the time one of the you had a real big agent. They still out there. Uh, Jimmy Sexton, ARM. They might have changed the name. I don't mm -hmm. know, but Jimmy Sexton was my agent at the time, and so mm -hmm. he had a lot of connections, you know, in the football area, and he represented a lot of you know head coaches, clients, players, all that type of stuff, and so. They invited me down to their office, you know, at the time. And and so he was like, you know, you think about coming out? I'm like, yeah. You know, and so yeah. he was like, you know, I want to represent you. So I was like, you know, um, I was like, man, I want to come out, but I don't want to come out and, you know, shoot a blank. And I was like, so I need some guarantees that, yeah. you know, or I not any guarantees, but it just, you know, and, you know, convince me this is the right decision or whatever. Okay. So he was like, all right, I'll tell you what. He said, I got my partner. He said, don't say that. <laughs> so he called up. Uh, it was a scout from Tampa Bay. Mm. He called one of the scouts from Tampa Bay, like, you know, be quiet. So he called him, like, hey, man, what's going on? Hey, hey, you know, all the A's and talk. Yeah, like, yeah. Let me ask you a question, man. What you think about that uh, Bashir kid from uh, Memphis? Yeah. And so, you know, he was like, uh, the safety? He was like, yeah. He said, oh, yeah, man. He said, he going first. He said, he going first day. Whoa. He said, he's going to be one of the top three safeties on the board. He said, you think so? He said, yeah, man. He said, a lot of teams like that, kid. What? He's like, all right, man, I'm going to call you back. So he hung up. <laughs> so we looked each other in the eye. So he needs he to say anything else? He shook his head. I shook my head. And I think we both have silent agreement right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, um, came on out that year, man. And ended up, you know, just like he said, I was a, I was a third safety taken in the uh, 2001 draft. I think it was. Derek Gibson went first, so Adam Archuleta went on. Mm. Archuleta Gibson, mm -hmm. and then myself. So, you know, things end up working out, you know. That's dope. So, you, did, did you watch the drive? You watched it at home? You watched it man, I was at home, man. My mom uh, was in Stone Mountain, man. She, mm -hmm. you know, we called all our close family and friends and mm -hmm. just invited everybody we knew and we just posted up at the crib, yeah. you know, and just, you know, sat around nervous, you know, had some food and yeah. some drinks and, you know. Yeah. Everybody, you know, that was close to you around high school coaches, friends, family, you know, yeah. just everybody that contributed to the journey, you know, they were around. And so watching, you know, first round went by and, you know, started you getting get a little nervous. Like, right? you know, right, first round he called by. somebody, he said I was going to be first round. Yeah, yeah, because it was, it, was, it was talk, you know, that Oakland needed the safety. And I knew, I knew for a fact it was going to take the safety. So, yeah, yeah. Did they? And, yeah, they did. Mm -hmm. They took uh, Derrick Gibson from Florida State. Okay. Yeah, actually, and then so, um, you know, I was like, ah, oh, man, I hope I don't, you know, hope second round don't go like the first, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. so, you know, it was, what, seven, eight picks later, you know, it was, uh, the Indianapolis coach came up, and right before that pick came up, my phone rang, and they'd always say, hey, yeah. they, they gonna call you for you, yeah, they yeah, drafted, they gonna call you, so, phone rang, I'm knocking there, oh, look, where the phone at, you know, knocking there, yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody oh, else, so I can get the phone, that's the phone number, I'm like, hello? You know, and they're like, uh, it's Sue Kelly from the coach. Hey, this is Sue Kelly from the Indianapolis coach. Man, I speak to Drake for sure. I'm like, it's me. You know, <laughs> that was speaking, it. speaking. Yeah. And it's like, hey, how you doing? Um, they say, we're going to go ahead and take you with our next pick. Stay on the phone. What? And I was like, so, you know, I just cheese. I'm like, yeah. did the coach? They said, it's going to get me. You know, just being country, you know. Being stone out. Yeah, yeah being stone out. And so. You know, sure enough, maybe about 60 seconds later, man, it came and walked across and, you know, with the um, 37th kick of the 2001 draft, the Indianapolis Coast Select, safety from Memphis, uh, and Drew Bashir, you know, so we all, yeah, we all went crazy, man, and, you know, just had a good time, celebrate the moment, man, you know, just hug kids, you know, on the phone, you know, just having that little draft moment. and Walking wow, yeah, there going crazy. Yeah, you already know. <laughs> And then from there, man, just trying to figure out what the night looks like, you know. Oh, you went out and all that? Yeah, went out and all that, man. I had my agent give me a limo the whole time. Oh, really? You already know I had that with that crap. Just in case they call my name, we finna act like <laughs> we finna act like we were. That's dope, man. Yeah. That's a hell of an experience, man. Yeah. So get drafted by the NFL, man, to the coast. Who, who was your coach at that time? Was it Dutchie? At the time, it was Jim Moore, man, and that's okay. when that whole uh, playoff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Saying, you oh, know, we right. played six and ten that first year. Yeah. It was a long year, man, and you know, 
we were getting beat. It seemed like by everybody that put on the helmet. And so, you know, that's when Jim Moore and that playoff. Yeah, the yeah we ain't going to the playoffs. Yeah, not at all. Okay. But, so, <clears throat> so after you get drafted, you get paid, man. What's the first thing you did with your money? Oh, what, what, what's the first big thing you did with your money? You probably did a lot. Man, I actually, uh, I bought my mom a house. It's still on my mom? Yeah, I bought my mom a house and tried to just get her straight real mm -hmm. quick for, you know, um, house and car. And just try to, you know, just try to beat Santa Claus real quick. Real quick. You know, because you know, nobody in my family would really seen, you know, from that type of you know, money. That type of money, you know, in, the, in one a lump sum. Yeah. In, life, in yeah. a lifetime, maybe, but not in the yeah. lump sum. You yeah. Know what I mean? Right so, quick. So you was, you was spending all the money on a lot of people? <clears throat> Man, you know, my loved ones and then that's what I had to learn earlier too, man. It just, you know, I was I was, you know, always a open hearted guy, man. Yeah. You know, like wanna see everybody do well type, you know, but mm -hmm. you know, I got a lot of these gray hairs trying to help a lot of folks out. Yes, because you know I mean? that was gonna be my next question. <laughs> family and friends, man. So you know, you doing that, like have you ever had to break some hearts, tell some people, man, no, or man, did it get out of hand? Man, it got way out of hand, you know, because at one point in time, I think my first two years I Start looking back on all the, you know, just, hey man, can you help me out? You know, last person I would call, hey man, you know, I wouldn't even call you. you know? How the hell a person with the money to let me? Yeah, <laughs> so all that type of stuff, man. I started adding all that stuff up, man. I was, shit, I was, I was down there handing out like 50k a year just on, just fixing other people's problems, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, quick. So I'm just like, man, that can be, you know, run a house, you know, like all kind of assets, just, you know, any, just anything straight cash. in hands. Mm -hmm. my life you know but so it just came to a point in time where you know i had to because i went i went strong enough at the time you yeah. know the young cat and just yeah. want to be cool there but yeah, still, they're like, they're them too. and still think you know yeah. you, you know when you're young you still kind of in that mind frame everybody your friend mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. you, you have to go through certain lessons in life to really you know teach you you know the real from the fake at, at some point in time but I just ended up having to point it like a note person. It was my mom, you know, it was like, anybody call me, I'm like, so I, you know, just to stay, keep my face clean. Hey, boy, you know, hey, oh yeah? Boy, you already know, boy, you know, I got you. Hey, look, do this for me though. Call my mom, and if she say, yeah, you got it. I say, cause you know, I ain't, I ain't know my finances no more. Well, so, so she, so she, so she say, yeah. nope. So, so you already know, Ma. But tell all them folks, no. Yeah. <laughs> so you already know. So it was just a way to keep me clean, you know what I mean? Because, yeah. you know, folks are people. Everybody imagines until you tell them no. Shout you out know to the moms, mean? man. Have, have some, did some of them people that you helped out come back again? Oh, yeah, man. You know, it's like um, it's like anything, man. Like, you know, bees. Bees go to the honey hole, you know, ants go to the mound, you know, roaches go to the dog. You drop my metaphors. You know what I mean? So, I'm like, you know, <laughs> it's always, you know. That was pre-planned. Certain things, you know, <laughs> attract certain personalities, certain yeah. types or whatever. And so, if you're always that person that's handing out and fixing everybody's problem, yeah. people are always going to come to you for their problem to be yeah. fixed, you know. So, just, just in that spirit, man, knowing that, seeing that, you know, like, no had become a part of the vocabulary like early and you can feel how you want to feel about it mm. you know what i mean that's deep yeah for real. Deep. but it's got to be that way because it's like <clears throat> what i really realized is like you trying to fix everybody else's problem for yours is totally fixed it's a true glass half empty metaphor so your glass is half empty mm -hmm. and rock is trying to be full mm -hmm. but you stay pouring your half empty glass and uh everybody else, everybody right? else and you you empty and ain't nobody pointing at you. Yeah. You feel me? So, like, as soon as I learned that, saw that, I'm like, man, I need to make sure my glass is overflowing and y'all catch Boy, my overflow. I want to end this motherfucker right now. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was it right there. Okay. Yes, bro. I'm taking that home with me. He said it now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. But, um, so you was doing that, man. Look, like, oh, I got to ask, man. Like, in the life, it's some wild parties and shit, bro. Man, it was love, man. It was love. You know, we had a lot of good fun, man. You know, it was a lot of good times, you know, a lot of a lot of memories, you know. And just, you know, a lot of uh being able to enjoy your youth, you know, at yeah. its capacity. Right. You, will, you know, money, you're right, yeah. like young and, yeah. you know, you flash it, but you can you, you just drop a couple thousand out right. of right. you know, just, yeah. <laughs> but it was just, you know, it was a good time, man, you know, being able to travel, you know, yeah. I was having a lady, me and my wife now. 
Shout out to my baby, man. You better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we, man, we kicking in Hawaii, and I, 20, you know, we 22, 23, you know, mm. and in Hawaii for a week, so, you mm. know, and just, just Nothing. Cool and kicking it, you know, so it just afforded me to be able to do a lot of stuff, man, that, uh, you know, people end up retiring, waiting to retire. To, to do, You yeah. know what I mean, so. Yeah, no doubt about you know, that. Shout out to that. You still friends with a lot of players? And Man, that's, I'm, I'm friends with a lot of guys, man. But um, <clears throat> with, you know, the only difference, like, like my college friends, I'm mm -hmm. still, you know, they're, they're plentiful. You know, what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. So, but my NFL guys, is you know, I rock with, you know, I rock with a handful of them. Yeah, you know, yeah, everybody yeah. else is like, oh, what up, what? You know, when yeah, I see you, type yeah, stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah, that work. Like, so the NFL was more like work buddies. You yeah. Know, college it was more like, you know, the, these so the cats here. Off, you know, you couldn't five dollars with everybody, so we can go get some uh, yeah. hamburgers from Wendy's because they're yeah. hungry type stuff. You that's know? true. Well, that's true. So that's true. So I'm gonna lead up to this next story with myself, man. You know, so I'm sorry, I ain't gotta do you like <laughs> this, but I gotta do it. I hurt my knee playing flag football, right? Oh, dirty game. Fuck the my ACL, man. But before I did go, I had met with him. It was probably like a month before, and uh, we was kicking and we was drinking some beers. And he was, we, I don't even know how we got to that, but he was like, yeah, man, I thought I was done. Um, but I, uh, what you say, you went out and played flag football, yeah. much to your wife's dismay. Yeah, 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 man. I was, it was on the back end of my career, and actually, this was the first year I didn't get picked up. You know, first yeah. year I wasn't on the team, and it was actually a year following, um, uh, ACL surgery. Yeah, 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 yeah. You was late, playing all the way through. Yeah, late in the season, like week nine, week ten, mm -hmm. and um, you know, my recovery. I guess you know, or certain teams kind of still hesitant, you know, because it was like my recovery window, like you know, not under, still under a year removed. Yeah, yeah. Season started, so it was like. Yeah, we're gonna keep you in mind, bro. We're gonna keep uh, you in mind. So we're you know, gonna fly you home, but we're gonna be yeah. And for any, you know, you know, top tier athlete, you know, yeah. that's a blow to your ego. And they're like, oh, you don't want me, I don't want you. You know. Yeah. So, so it's like, you know, it was a bit of rebellious, man, but you know, at the time I hadn't gotten picked up and um it was maybe like week six in the season, mm. so I was throwing all kind of pity parties, like, oh mm. man, my career over with, you know, I was in the tank, you know, just, uh, man, we, we, you know, just, probably you started growing your beard out. Yeah, 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 you know, just, uh, just in the tank, and so, you know, there's a buddy of mine, he called me, he's like, hey man, we uh, we playing flag football over here on Sunday, Fucking devil, yo. and so, you know, he's like, man, you gotta come test that knee out, I'm like, that's a great idea, you know, just, <laughs> just being dumb, and like, so, you know, I go out the next day, and we running around and I went to the Pro Bowl on them cats out there. I had like 20 touchdowns, killing 37 them. interceptions in it. So I was like, man, I'm done. So it was like, man, we're going to play one more game. So I was like, man, I'm done. So I was walking off and they were like, man, come on, man, just one more game. Bitch. Yeah, so I just, you know, I was like, all right, put my cleats on and I'm out and just slow backpedaling in the yeah. middle of the field. And, you know, I go to break on the ball and I plant and mm, I just fall on the ground and I was, it felt like somebody hit me with a rock. Just a boulder just fell out the sky, just hit me in the back of my leg. And I was what? like, to the point where I, I was, I was 100 percent convinced that's what happened. As soon as I hit the ground, yeah. I woke up cussing like, "What are you motherfuckers?" I'm like, you know, just like I'm looking for a rock. Man. I'm looking for that rock, man. You know, damn. And so I'm looking around. I don't see no rock because I'm sure looking for something like this. Yeah, yeah somebody big like head hit, hit me. That's it. I'm looking around. I'm like, I don't see no rock. I'm like. I'm looking down my leg, just shaking. It was this. So I'm like, oh, Lord. So I reach back there. I'm like, man, I don't feel my Achilles. I already know I'm familiar with the body at this point. I don't yeah. hurt enough. I'm like, I know it's supposed to be a tendon back there. I'm like, man. Mm. The long story short, I haven't told my dad I'm going to kill you, man. Mm. So I go home. I'm laying in the dag on the floor. My wife just told me not to go out in that place. She come in. I skipped church to go, matter of fact. <laughs> you know, oh, I was mad at me. <laughs> I skipped church. You had just went to church. I was saying, laying on the floor, iced up. She come in, look at me like, man, like I don't, I, like I don't, I don't bought uh, groceries without 401k. <laughs> <laughs> so he was a veteran at that point. The veteran minimum is what? Yeah, I mean, I think it was like 750 or something. 750 yeah. carry here. But you would have got that for like the rest of that little season. Yeah, yeah. Then you would have probably did another two years. Yeah, I could have I I snuck probably a couple, 
two man. or three out. So it was a big deal, man. Like yeah. I mean, decisions, people. Decisions. You know what I mean? It can cost you. I'm living it upside. I'm living it upside, but all right, so we we out of there, man. And you know, NFL is. I know you probably was holding on for a while to recovery, but it's over with. And now you you doing um investments in different things. I know you say you was investing into concerts and you know just experimenting. Yeah, you know, my journey, man, has been um I've done a lot of stuff, man. You know, sometimes I, uh, yes. my people make fun of me, you know, but me. Cause I was like, you got every hat for every company in your closet, bro. Man, you know, the work, you know, life come full circle, you know. Yeah. It's like when I stopped playing football, you know, like I, I mentioned before, I got fired from my first two real world jobs. You know, it was I was there. Which was what? My first one, I was just, you know, my auntie, uh, she worked at this little college called Everest Institute. Mm -hmm. And so I was, stupid ass she was like, yeah, she was like, um, I got some um, spots for admissions reps. So I'm like, let me try that out. Yeah. <laughs> he was an admission rep? I went over there just like, you know, do you yeah, bro, I, bro, I was, I, man, I, I played football for 20 years of my life. I got done and it ain't no manual, no playbook. And I just, True. you know, I True. ain't know what the hell to do other than try True. to but keep making some money. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some kind of way to figure it out until you figure it out. Yeah. You know, so I, I went over there and was doing that for a couple months and I'm like, man, it's, it's lame as hell. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so midway in between that, our dad gonna got a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Midway in between that, I did a coaching internship with okay. the Carolina Panthers. Oh, yes, I went. I told uh, Everest, I told him I had to, uh, I told him I fell and had to get a knee surgery and I needed to leave my absence. <laughs> so, look, I'm, I'm going to leave my absence. I'm up in Carolina. I'm coaching with the Panthers. You know? uh, you know, <laughs> TV and shit. Yeah, yeah, I'm on TV. I'm on the sideline. You know? <laughs> so, you know, but. um. Man, when I got back, I was like, man, I ain't, look, I was convinced. I said, boy, this ain't for me. So you I, ain't even like the coaching? I mean, you know, at the time, man, I just, like, coaching was just like playing to me. It was still Not too close to the game. Really, it was a little more than playing. Because yeah. after, after players get done, you know, it's on you whether you're not, you want to be good or not. Yeah, yeah. And being good is putting the air in. You can watch film at home. You can watch film at the practice. But it's on you. You and your mm -hmm. time. After they get done, coaches still got a whole block. Y'all yeah. you know, still got to meet. They talk. You still yes. got to get together together. We still got to watch film. This yeah. is even in Little League football. Yeah. Yeah. This is coaching five-year-olds after practice. It's more to damn do, bro. Yeah, for yeah. real, for real. So just that whole, and seeing that, man, we was up, you know, midnight, jumping back up four in the morning. I'm like, man, I'm like, I feel like a slave. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, bro, that's a, that's a job. Yeah, man. it's a super job. Man. Yeah, <laughs> man, and, 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 man, look, you know, let me – not make it seem like there's anything wrong with anything. Mm -hmm. These coaches get paid millions, True. right? Millions. So they ain't head coaches or nothing. They're not head coaches to do what they do, man. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's major upside, but it just depends on what you look for. Yeah. And yeah. at the time, I want a little more time with my family. You know yeah. what I mean? And so that was always been my thing. And really, I had to, you know, bump my head to figure out how I was going to be there. Yeah. That was my goal, you know? And that was why I was willing to sacrifice. So, you know. True. And that's just kind of how, how that part worked out, so. I was at Everest, and then I uh, went to this dad on collections company. My, my partner, he was a, uh, you know, I'm a signal. Shout out, probably a signal. He was a signal. He was like uh, one of the managers over there. He was like, man, I need a job. So I'm just trying. So you know, went over there, man. Less than six months. I'm like, I'm like, bro, I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> I just went That's in there. That's going up, thing man. with these jobs. I was like, too, man, man, I feel like I, said, I feel like I'm gonna cut my wrist one day over here. <laughs> I'm like, so it was terrible. I mean, it wasn't even just terrible. It was cool, bro. It was getting the bills paid, but it just, it didn't challenge me. You know what I'm mm. saying? It was nothing mm. about doing that that just made me want to tell up and do it again. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. I used to literally sit in my little cubicle and I used to have a window by my cubicle. And I used to do my work and just look out the window. I used to feel like a caged bird. Like, well, I wish I was out there. Yeah, <laughs> Flying around, you know what I'm saying? Doing something. So, you know, I already knew then. I said, man, I got to. I said, I either got to have a field job or I got to be on my own just doing, you know, sure. what motivates me, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm a little free-spirited in that sense, you know what I mean? And so, but it's all worked out for me, you know what I mean? Because I still got stuff I took years ago that's still yeah. paying now, you know what I mean? And so, True. and I not, you know, took You like year. them type of plays, though. Yeah, that's, but that's really my whole playbook, for yeah. real, for real. Like, yeah. as I've gotten older, you know, I, I see something that, that interests me. Mm -hmm. And I, if I see the opportunity to be able to create a residual 
you know, lane or something mm -hmm. that can, continues to pay my family, I'll take a year or two out to develop yeah. that. You yes. know what I mean? So yes. say I did that in five times over the course of 10 years. Yeah. I look back, I got five income streams that I'm following. You feel right. me? Yeah, that's, still, that's still paying out. You know what I mean? And I ain't committed to none of them. I ain't got to jump up, yeah. get dressed, be at now one of them at no time. And this dude, the ultimate salesperson, he gonna call your phone. <laughs> you finna get added to text groups. <laughs> he gonna make you feel bad about not taking on the opportunity. Hey, listen, listen, I'm getting thousand dollars a day. Free money. Free money. How the fuck you gonna wake up a thousand dollars a day? He be like, you know what, my mom, let me hold a thousand dollars. Do you say that? Do you say So you do all that, and then I think. Uh, the last man, I was so proud of you, Drees, man. You was doing the logistics. My man had the office. Every, that shit was sweet. I was like, you was doing it with like uh, investments from uh, ex players, and it was a big thing. Yeah, yeah, man. We had put, you know, I was on logistics, you know, I mentioned like <clears throat> my mainstay always been uh, real estate and transportation yeah. logistics. You know, those, those, my tenure in, in just Both making money moving. in business has always been the longest in those two fields. And mm -hmm. so, you know, we started out, I started out in logistics as um, a, a contract with FedEx Ground. Their whole ground model is 100% independent contract. Mm -hmm. So, every day individual like you and I, you got the opportunity to go and, you know, bid on and, and pay for it. It's like a franchise. Model. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, if somebody has... It's 10 routes good. that service in these areas, you, mm -hmm. you know, if they say, you know what, I had enough, they, they can sell their business. You can buy the business with the assets, you come in, take over, you manage it, and as long as you're moving in packs. Yeah. And so that's the only thing that matters. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it started out as a, uh, a contract with them doing package and delivery, like mm -hmm. with the home services. So I was hustling. I was out there with my drivers, you know, I was riding. Mm -hmm. And it was funny, you know, because. With the drivers. <laughs> You know, because at the end of the day, I, I realized, I'm like, you know, <clears throat> in order for me to make money be profitable, mm -hmm. you know, I can't 100% depend on my driver, you know, True. because if you got kids, you can get sick, you know, just anything happen. So I was like, I positioned myself to be the backup driver. So I had to learn the route, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I took the first couple months and I was out there hustling. I'm standing yeah. in packs, running yeah. to the door, you know what I mean? Just, but I learned the whole route, the whole area, so you know, in that time. And so... You know, that worked out uh, well, you know, for a number of years and end up selling that and then getting into uh, like the 18 wheelers. Mm -hmm. And so we ran refrigerated uh, trailers around the southeast, you know, for a number of years and end up, you know, going from that point, going into the brokerage side of things. And <coughs> so, yeah. you know, it was really uh, trying to just do things on a large scale, started a 3PL uh, in which is a uh, third party logistics mm -hmm. service, a broker that offers, you know, training you. So you partner with you're shippers. You're a middleman. Yeah, you're a yeah. middleman. You know, I did that for three years myself. It's yeah. good. It's good, though. Shippers, truckers, and mm -hmm. you put them together, you make your money, you know, in there. Mm -hmm. So we call ourselves, you know, we're trying to do things on a higher level, man, partnering with an uh, organization called the NMTA, mm -hmm. which was a National Minority Trucking Association. They were, you know, a house or umbrella for all the minority veterans and women on, uh, in the in, uh, transportation companies in that area, or in the in, in the in the industry rather, right, and right. so just knowing that they have a lot of business set aside for you know those sectors, you know it just made sense for us to partner with them, you know form an athlete based brokerage, mm -hmm. you know leverage our celebrity to get right. into a lot of uh, corporate America doors, and then you know the celebrity appeal combined with all the minority women and veteran on truckers, you know, we got a chance at, you know, hundreds of million dollar contracts, yeah, people do <clears <clears <throat> you know, and so we got in there, you know, formed the entity, raised the money, you know, did, did had everything moving and going, but unfortunately we had a, uh, you know, a, a weak cog in the link, man, mm -hmm. he actually the CEO, Kevin Reed of uh, the National Minority Trucking Association, ended up running off with our money, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kevin yeah. Reed. Yeah, Kevin Reed. We're on your fucking ass, dude. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, we see you. Yeah, right. so, you know, up. you know, I mean, so. How that, much you ran off with? That was like 300 grand. Like 300 grand. I lost some really good relationship Ooh. behind that. Um, really? Yeah. Because they so, invested into it. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. They had nothing to tell them about their money. Yeah, yeah. And I was a, a president at the time. You mm. know, so, you know. Still a lot of speaking behind. Man, I got a lot of great hair behind that one. Yeah. For real. Yeah. For real. For real. 
So, you know, you just live and you learn, man. You know, life will teach you all kind of things and, you know, just be all kind of good hands and bad hands. But, you know, as long as you're paying attention to the lessons, you can learn from the good and the bad. Yeah. Yeah, you a smart dude, man, and uh, here we are today. My man yeah. got a nickname, bro. I don't know if y'all in the crypto. Yeah. My man called himself Blockchain Bashir. Blockchain he bought Bashir. The, he bought the uh, trademark that. Tell us about this crypto space in this world, which we both love, but he like my mentor in this. It's a lot of money to be made in crypto from your fucking phone, man. I'm telling you, get into it. Absolutely, man. I mean, crypto, man, it's really, um, it's going to revolutionize mm -hmm. every single industry, man. I was just reading an article the other day talking about how cryptocurrency and blockchain technology are going to just change, you know, 58 of the top biggest industries in a number of different ways for the better. Um, basically, I mean, what cryptocurrency is, this, I mean, it was, Bitcoin was the first cryptocurrency and it was mm -hmm. created as a, peer-to-peer -peer payment system mm -hmm. as a way and uh, through a decentralized network. Decentralized meaning nobody owns or controls it like the central bank does with right. our money right now. Well, so, that, <clears throat> so that's huge and big simply because for the first time ever in, you know, money or transactions, transparency is, is all for trust and transparency. Is How all can they even do that with money? How can you create something that's not even controlled by anybody? So, so, work. so it's through, uh, so Bitcoin was designed originally to have the same exact characteristics and features of gold. Mm. So it was designed originally as a store of value mm -hmm. and, and, <clears throat> and in that you can use that the same way you can use gold. You can barter and trade with gold, you can mm -hmm. get different goods and gold. So it's designed that same way, but, uh, you know, those that have Bitcoin can pay each other and it can right. barter and trade in. So it right. means, uh, you know, to interact on a peer to peer network so given that um you know it was cryptocurrency not considered cash in a sense oh, you know it was, it was a totally unregulated field and so that's that's the way it still sits to this day it's unregulated but it's money it, it's money it's, and it works the same way stocks does basically it's convertible for cash the same way that stocks are convertible for cash you buy cryptocurrency on cryptocurrency exchanges different exchanges like uh, I think Coinbase is one of the more popular, mm -hmm. Coinbase, Binance, Crypto.com, mm -hmm. uh, KuCoin, uh, Kraken, it's a number of different ones. But you buy any cryptocurrency on a crypto exchange and all the only thing you have to do is connect your uh, wallet, excuse me, connect your bank account mm -hmm. to the crypto exchange so you, buy. so you can buy the cryptocurrency of your choice. You can buy Bitcoin, Ethereum, mm -hmm. you know, Litecoin, XRP, or some of the, you know, more popular ones. Yes. From Bitcoin, it created, I think it's over 6,500, what they consider altcoins. So any mm -hmm. cryptocurrency outside of Bitcoin is considered what they call an altcoin or alternative mm -hmm. coin or cryptocurrency. So, but I mean, cryptocurrency, I mean, just the, the potential in it and the magnitude that, that will happen because um, Bitcoin can't be manipulated like the dollar mm. can like anybody can go in the back room and just print out tens of you know just tens of millions of dollars and and what that does is it it affects us in the price of goods that's why we see all these high um cost of goods and inflation and housing you know gas is at all time high yeah. you know just all the good wood was at all time high recently so and that's the that's the effect of when you continuously print money everybody right. knows the law of supply and demand says the more you have or something you know, the less it's worth. And that's what's happening with the dollar. They're printing a shit ton of dollars. And the more they print, the more it's going to take for us to buy the same goods. You know, it's, it's beer is once a dollar. Now it's, it's going to be $5, $10. Same thing with a pack of nine layers. You know, mm -hmm. we used to get one for, you know, 10 cents. Yeah. Now it's a quarter, 50 cents a dollar, you know. So that's what happens when you manipulate the money supply. And through cryptocurrency, everything's visible. Mm -hmm. All right, so everything is on the blockchain and Bitcoin has a set supply, a set supply. So no matter what, and that's why people are saying, you know, one Bitcoin can easily be worth a million, two million, five million, ten million, you know, in <clears throat> the years to come. Because it's only about 5% of the world that even knows about cryptocurrency or Bitcoin. Really? That's it, really. And so it's still a shit ton of money that's mm -hmm. left to pour into that asset. And it's only 21 million Bitcoin that'll ever be created. And so far, I think it's about uh, 19 million that's been minted. 
So you got about three million more, you know, nineteen twenty. You got three, four million more Bitcoin that ever be created right. for the rest of the entire world, you know. And so that's why the value of one is going to be just unlimited. And so, just given the the, the money that that from the asset is created, that whole altcoin market. So, the same opportunity that early Bitcoin adopters had in Bitcoin is present now in a lot of these altcoin projects because this is the new ecosystem. This is the new financial ecosystem that's being mm -hmm. formed right in front of our eyes. And so, money. the new money. It'll be the new money. And so that's why you can see guy people put. Eight thousand dollars in something like a, a Shiba Inu, and a year later they're worth five billion. That's cool. You know because crypto is the is the grand equalizer. You know all the money that's been diluted over here, you can put it in crypto and get your real value worth. Right. You feel me? So it's just man, there's so many opportunities in it, uh, good and bad, man. You know it's a lot of scams. You you can get your money taken, but if Every you move day, wisely, you man, I mean you can. The everyday Joe Blow can. Be sick. So you think this is the 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 one quote unquote <laughs> job that's gonna keep you? Crypto. Yeah, that's really the only thing that's had my interest, like strong interest for yeah. last three years, three years plus, man. I spent thousand dollars just learning the space. Like I mm. I wake up at four or five in the morning just to absorb some content on YouTube mm -hmm. and learn about a or Oracle or a Node or a Rap Token or you know how mm -hmm. you know, this new uh uh, taproot uh, Bitcoin upgrade affects the network. You know what I mean? Just anything that's just intriguing to me. So you know, anything that can hold my chin that long, <laughs> got some good, uh, got some good upside as far as long. Some good upside. <laughs> this is like, uh, I mean, the overhead is up to you, but you don't have to go nowhere. All you gotta do is study. Yeah, I mean, there's so many ways to really just make money in cryptocurrency. Um, you can do the traditional buy and hold. You can day trade it. You know, mm -hmm. you can leverage trade it. You can participate in some of these what they call community projects. This is early um, cryptocurrency projects that's forming um, their ecosystem, and you can participate mm -hmm. in through decentralized networks and be a contributor to that ecosystem, and you get early access to the tokens. Right. So, I mean, it's a number of ways. Um, like babies, right? Um, yeah, yeah, it's crowdfunding, decentralized mm -hmm. crowdfunds. So, I mean, it's a number of different uh, things that you can do to make money in the space. You can buy a hold, you can, you know, just whatever floats your boat. But, right. but as you said, you're doing it all from the phone. From yeah, phone, that's the right? thing. So, I mean, it, it eliminates, you know, the infrastructure and a lot of things. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it upgrades a lot of companies' infrastructure. I mean, it's, it's the, 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 the possibilities are endless, even in real estate. I yeah. mean, talking about being able to now tokenize the asset, taking the, the building, excuse me, that was once and traditionally always illiquid, you know, just uh, as a building sits, it doesn't provide much liquidity unless it's sold, you know, it's sold or the liquidity is provided through the rent. Right. And now you can tokenize these same projects, which mean basically, you form if in the real world you're giving shares. You can create shares through a building or tokens, and now you can sell these tokens and you can have thousands of people have ownership in the building, and now you have liquidity, you know, to be able to, you know, upgrade the building, do this, buy some more real estate, you know, but it just it offers a just a ton of just upside, or even with this metaverse stuff, yeah, man. They yeah, got yeah, yeah. Like, it's, a, it's a whole augmented reality, virtual reality zone. But even in that, you can buy plots of land in the yeah. metaverse. And you can charge inside. The, you can charge the little characters as they use your as they use your space. The characters, the little characters. It's, it's like my, I was lot. telling my wife the other day. My my son be playing at Roblox, and they got these little things called skins. Mm -hmm. And the man be paying twenty dollars for skins Bruh. and skin in number the outfit. Bruh. That man does spend thousands on skins. Yeah, I was like, I was telling my wife, somebody get in there. How can we get some? Kids money. Can we just but now in the metaverse, yeah, you can buy a building, and then these kids you know, as you, it's pay to play. These kids coming out of your building, you, you know, Virtual. I don't know all the, the, the money down to the money details, but you can buy a racetrack in the metaverse, charge mm -hmm. companies for signage, you know, and market. Listen, the they market got malls. Is you can buy clothes. They got malls. You can get yeah. space, but Movies. it's all kind of stuff that it's you've crazy. never heard of. It's crazy. That's going on right now in cryptocurrency and blockchain From and just the phone. And, and, and anybody, Joe Blow, can make millions, hundreds of millions, and then one available through the current financial system. Yeah, man, they doing it every day, 
Give me that all type of cat. Bitcoin or uh, Rodney. Yeah. Ain't that his name? Yeah, Bitcoin Rodney. Yeah. Rodney, Rodney, me, nigga. <laughs> Rodney, country here. <laughs> Rodney made the most of me. Like, man, you know what I'm saying? Hey, this is deep. But that meta universe, that's. I was reading that, man, and uh, Zuckerberg, you a motherfucker, man. Like, this dude, man, WhatsApp, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, everything on your phone's up on. Mm, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. That's really a lot of the appeal to cryptocurrency off of decentralized networks. So right. it's, it's not centralized in the point in the say that Zuckerberg or, you know, this these individuals on it, the users that, that use the network controlling them. Right, and it's in it's controlled through governance, and everybody, everybody can vote on what's best for the network, you know, yeah, yeah. and that type of stuff. So you know, and it's all transparent, you know. And it's it's all transparent. It's yeah. transparent. It's like you need ten million thousand hundred <laughs> mega computers to even hack the network because of the security that the blockchain provides. That every single transaction that every user on the network is validating each transaction, yeah. and anybody you know fakes a transaction, it's gonna get revalidate through the next use as it goes to the next node, you know, but so it just it offers stuff we ain't never seen before. So Yeah. So you got me in on this new one, man. The hyper fun. I think it's really dope though. Um plug them in on that, man. It's, it could be some people interested in that. Absolutely, man. You know, um we just talked about um there's a number of different ways to make money in cryptocurrency. The hyper fund is one that I'm fond of, man. It's a, it's a super dope project, you know, that's backed by some of the biggest names in crypto. Uh, it's, a, it's a group called the Hypertech Group. I mean, these guys have literally done everything from uh, angel investors in the 12 of the top 20 cryptocurrencies uh, by market cap. They've uh, funded over 300 different crypto products, including banks in this space. Um, they have ownership in 40 different crypto exchanges, including Binance, 3% owners in Binance. You know how huge Binance is. Um, these guys um, consult with government bodies all over the world. They've been in uh, mining crypto since the first Bitcoin white paper came out. Matter of fact, uh, the mining company is so large, BW Mining, that it produces over 60% of the Bitcoin that's produced uh, to the ecosystem. So these guys are big boy billionaires in the space, man, creating more billions than uh, Richard Branson in, in seven short years. So uh, the Hyperfund is their, their new uh, platform, and it's really their customer acquisition piece in order to bring 30 million users to uh, this whole crypto ecosystem that they built. They they have an ecosystem that offers everything from uh, uh, chats to, to the news to uh, they have their own crypto bank with a million plus customers already. Um, so they have a number of DeFi services, DeFi decentralized finance. So, I mean, they're really just doing things to really shape the space. And so when they have when they're back in a project like the hyper fund i couldn't help but to you know just stick my feet in and so far so good i mean it's uh 15 to 30 percent coming in so okay you know i you know <laughs> so, i can't get can be mad at that okay but some residuals the residuals good yeah. every day you get paid passive residuals get paid to your wallet every single day That's um in, in cryptocurrency of course it's a membership club mm -hmm. you know as a part of your membership yeah, right. you get right. yeah you mm -hmm. get um total crypto education so they have um their own yeah. uh, crypto like i said they i don't know if i said it before but it's one of the things they've done they have opened 16 schools around you know the mm -hmm. country around just the world teaching people about blockchain mm -hmm. um technology and cryptocurrency and so as a part of your membership you get free education right almost every day you know literally and so they got all the models of courses anywhere from uh beginner to advanced mm -hmm. so um that's there for you to enjoy as well and i've been, I've been watching a few <coughs> man i've been involved in a few and these guys could tell you they don't need your money you know what i'm saying <laughs> but they want to use your money like everybody else why not Absolutely. you know it's it's a, it's a blessing okay. but cryptocurrency man it is currency and hey man it's another episode of Entrepreneur TV. Plug them in, though. Tell them where they can find you at so to get involved with this hype, with this hype for funds and crypto because people need coaching and coaching costs. Absolutely. Man. You know, um, oh, I, I was actually, man, me and my wife were talking about last night. I'm mm -hmm. in the process of putting together like a uh, intro to crypto course for, for newbies and people that, you know, want to understand and learn about crypto. Still don't have the, the website or the, um, you know, the, the drop mm -hmm. that yet, but I'm trying to have that packaged and, and ready to go by, uh, uh, was it Black Friday? Oh, yeah. Black Friday, so it's coming, coming, right? coming up pretty soon. So, right. you know, we're in the shop sweating it out, trying to okay. make sure we got some content. But I mean, um, 
you know, I don't, I don't have anything that I just market direct. You know, like opportunities like that. You know, if um, if you're interested in, I'll tell you about it. If it's, if it's not, you know, it still doesn't affect anything that comes to the wallet. So I mean, dude, that he's just not oh, for y'all. Oh, yeah, Facebook. Hey, okay, yeah, holla at me, hey, man. I'm the plug. Hey, if y'all want to talk plug, about it, you know, right? y'all want to learn it's, about it's, it, holla at oh, It's a little deep for that. We can, all, we can all sit down and. Cash up is a uh, yep. cash up. <laughs> oh, and I, that's it. You know what I'm yes, saying? Sir. Hit the yes, sir. Okay, man. Appreciate you coming out. Man, I appreciate you having Love, me. Love, man. That's my brother appreciate right there, man. Me, man. As y'all can see, he's a smart guy. Yeah. And uh, shout out to the financial paramedic. Oh, my mic fell, yo. Shout out to the financial paramedic. Shout out. To the camera crew, man. Hey, we out, right? Hey, we hey, out. Hey, hey, man, mics fall all the time. Hey, this is hey, a real hey, podcast. Mics fall all the time, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs>